If you remember, we did discuss about one of the principles as exhaustive testing is impossible. When we talk about exhaustive testing, it says that trying with all possible combinations of test inputs and test data is not practically possible to be conducted because there might be any number of test cases which can be prepared and definitely we do not have enough time to create these n number of test cases which might be efficient as well. So now, then when this principle was initiated, the question came then how much testing is enough? That's a very big question to be answered at any point of time. That how do we decide, how do we measure that how much testing will be enough for a particular product at any particular point of time? And that's where this tutorial will be answering that question with help of the test estimation. So let's understand a little more about the test estimation today. Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and today we are talking about how much testing is effort as a question to be answered with help of the test estimation. When it comes to the test estimation, it is mainly a responsibility of the test manager in coordination with the test analyst or technical test analyst to determine that how much testing will be enough when it comes to testing of a particular product in any particular project. And of course, the test estimation is only the way by which you can determine that how much cost, time and effort will be required to define quality in a product. So generally, this question can be asked in two different ways, like how much testing is enough in terms of the effort, time and cost and in terms of quality as well. So generally, as a part of test estimation, a test manager with other senior resources of the organization will determine that there are three factors which need to be determined for any activity which you perform as a part of the testing life cycle. So what are these three factors? That is the budget, time and effort. Well, the budget stands for the cost involved in that activity. For example, the activities include here the test analysis, test design, test case execution, implementation, monitoring and reporting, a lot of activities. No matter what activity you're trying to do as a part of the testing life cycle, we have to determine certain parameters for that and that is what you call it as test estimation. So the three parameters are the budget, which is the cost involved in that particular activity, the time required to do certain activities, like of course it might have different schedule and each activity might have different set of number of hours required to complete them at any point of time. And the third one is effort, where effort is not about the manpower or human resource which you have within your organization, it is about the number of test cases, amount of testing to be done on that particular activity. For example, if you're talking about unit testing, how much unit testing would be enough in order to define quality in the product? Same way, we have different levels like performance testing, usability testing, security testing, integration testing, and whatnot. There are a lot of such levels which have to be determined and estimated for delivering them on time as well as completing the desired coverage as well as the quality. So now the test estimation is all about this. No matter which activity you conduct, at the same time, you need to know what will be the budget allocated for this activity, what will be the time required to conduct this activity or complete it, and the third is definitely the amount of testing to be done for that particular segment. Now this can be done in several ways. Right, we do have two different major appro approaches to conduct test estimation. The number one is matrix based approach. Number two is the expert based approach. When you talk about matrices, these are just like any other matrices which you use in your process for monitoring. The same way we do have certain matrices which talks about the estimation, like how much more we need to do, how much we have done already, how long will it take to complete these remaining activities and how much more uh, we need to cover in order to attain that quality. So if you talk about agile methodologies, we do have a burn down charts as one of the example. The burn down charts will at any point of time, if you derive that chart or populate it, it will show you that how much work is remaining in a particular sprint to be completed. Where this output of the burn down charts can be fed in to the velocity of the team to further upgrade or degrade or just constitute with the same thing to see that how well people will be completing or whether we will be able to achieve what we have defined as the goal of the sprint. Other way, this is the matrix one. If you talk about the expert based approach, 
for estimation in agile methodology, we have something called as the planning poker. Planning poker is just like you know having a particular card and having different numbers on that and the manager basically asks the team or the product owner asks the team that is development team that what do you think for a particular user story how much points do you get now for your kind of information a one point uh, sometimes means like eight or five hours of time of your usual day right so when you say one point let's assume that we are considering eight hours which are standard so the team says you know someone of for the team member says that it is going to take four points some people say five points and we continue talking about the same thing uh, in cyclic process like iterations and then unless all the team members come to a common conclusion and common point for a particular user story. So we will talk about the details in different uh, video but here I just want to give you an idea that what exactly planning poker is. So planning poker is expert based approach in agile methodologies. Now, same way, if you talk about the traditional approaches, for example, we talk about waterfall and V model. And there, if you talk about the matrix based approach or matrix based estimation, we have the defect data or, for example, we have defect data and the defect turnaround time. All these factors will influence and tell us that how much more we need to do and how long we will take to complete the remaining activities. That's one of the examples. There are several other examples for different activities. And when it comes to the expert-based estimation for traditional approaches, we do have techniques like white band delphi, which is again going to expand everything, the work and estimation on that, and then we will derive how much time, effort, and uh, budget will be required to complete any particular activity. Now, estimation is just not about monitoring these kind of things, that is what kind of cost, time, and budget will be required. It's more about answering that question which we started with, that is how much testing is enough. So remember team, if any time you have a question in your mind that how to determine how much testing will be enough for any particular activity within the testing life cycle or for the overall testing life cycle as well, then the answer will be given by the test estimation, which is done much earlier in the life cycle. Right before the test planning, the estimation will be done. And this estimation will determine the overall activities throughout the life cycle of testing that what, how, when, where it will happen. And of course, who will be doing that as well? All right. So this is what we wanted to discuss in nutshell about test estimation. Of course, each technique plays a vital role. And for that, you need to know the details of the techniques. So we will be getting back to you with another set of tutorials somewhere in future, talking about these techniques in more detail. So that's all from this particular episode, team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer them. And till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.